What's going on, peeps? My name is Simon, and you're watching Soundwave TV, transforming your video experience. Guys, my last video, I forgot to talk about some really important things that happened last year. And it's like, this is why I got to plan out my scripts a little better. I forgot to talk about the Boston Marathon attacks. And it was, I saw the whole thing transpire live on TV. And it was just, that whole week, it was just a combination of scariness and heartwarming at the same time. It was scary to see something like that. People just get attacked and scarred and blown up on a live hookup. But it was also heartwarming to see people come together surround Boston and the people of Boston, you know, rise above tragedy. And I think we as a public need to have a better knowledge of what bombs look like. And because when I see a bomb, I'm thinking things are dynamite strapped to a clock, you know, like they have on the movie, like they have on the cartoons. I wouldn't know, they may use like a crock pot or something, like a pressure cooker full of like nails and bolts and crap. I would not have known that. I would have thought just some crazy dude, just some homeless guy left a crock pot he found out on the street. So I definitely think we need like a knowledge base as a public so we can defend ourselves better, you know. Because I'm just worried that some joker's gonna go out there and try something like that. Not not necessarily at the Boston Marathon because they'll have more security this year. But just at another live big event, like a regular town parade or something. And I don't think Rolling Stone did anything wrong. Like they put one of the bomber guys, it was two brothers, and they put the younger brother on the cover. And I think they were just doing it to show the face of evil, the face of the event. Not necessarily to put him in any kind of celebrity light. I don't think they were trying to make him look like some sort of teen idol. And I think for people who read the article, I think it was a very insightful article, the, the, the few excerpts that I that I read from it. I just think they were just trying to tell the story, and they've put, like, I mean, Bin Laden and, and other terrorists have been on covers before, so I don't see, see where Rolling Stone was doing anything wrong or different that had been done before. Also, uh, Nelson Mandela's passing was sad because, you know, uh, a voice for freedom was silenced, but he died at uh, 95, lived a very long life, and it just, the whole time he passed away, it is a time for reflection and thinking, you know, how many people would risk giving up a third of their life to fight for freedom? Fight for people who may not even know who you are, you know, fight for freedom for people who will be around long after you're gone. I don't know if people have that kind of vision, that kind of foresight. And it should really make us think, you know, what am I living for? Where are we going in life? What will be our legacy when we leave this earth? And I'm just like crazy. Like how did the fake sign language guy get past all those inspectors and planners for... Mandela's funeral. He just guys up there doing Naruto, Sasuke's, Sakura, Leaf Village hand signs, and nobody knew. And like, this is a world leader. You get one shot to do it right. Let's make sure that the guy doing sign language can actually do sign language. Um, well, last week. James Avery, actor James Avery, passed away, and he was best known for playing Philip Banks on the sitcom Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. And some of you may or may not know that he was also the voice of Shredder, the villain from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And I was just looking at the credits one day when I was little, like, James Avery, I've seen that name before that I watched Fresh Prince next week. It's the same guy. I'm like, the same guy that's yelling at Will and Carlton. It's the same guy who's ye yelling at Rocksteady and Bebop and Krang. And it just, it tripped me out. 
And he's one of the guys who really got me to going and wanted to go into voice acting because he had such a dramatic, strong presence on both series. So just um it's just sad to see him go. You know, he died at uh, 68 and had a uh, heart trouble. But, you know, I would say, you know, glad when people aren't suffering. You know, people are in a better place, you know, so they don't be sick and suffering anymore. So, so I think about that. But, in other words, it's been freaking freezing all week long. And I've just been trying to stay warm and trying to make my way back and forth to work. If there ever was a case of first world problems, it was this week. People freezing bananas to hammer things. People freezing eggs on the sidewalk and on their porches. Oh, and my favorite, people boiling water and then throwing it in the air to see it freeze. This is why other countries hate us. All this junk that's going on. Other countries don't have clean water, they don't have food to eat, and we're out here just wasting it to prove something that the weatherman just told you 10 minutes ago before you stepped outside. I'm just glad it warmed up because I'm tired of going outside and feeling like I got smacked in the face by a freaking frost giant. I feel like I'm living on Hoth somewhere. But anyway, just a few reflections from last year and hopefully you all are staying warm is warming up now but we got a lot of rain coming for the weekend so leave comments in the comment bar down below tell me what you think of the video tell me what you want me to talk about on a future video until next time this is Soundwave signing off peace